Let's talk about what this is. This is this is game list. This is an idea that we had months and months ago. And I feel like we should maybe even explain to people yeah. how you and I know each other. Which is <laughs> <laughs> bizarrely strange. Uh, I actually did something funny and I refuse to share it. Maybe for the hundredth episode celebration we can read it, but Colin and I met each other via a <laughs> group zoom call with jeff keely jeff keely the man that's Mr. like the Game lightest way to put it that sounds way cooler than it is what happened yeah. was about a year and a half ago jeff keely tweeted in the midst of the pandemic that game awards was going to be weird and they wanted to hear from people in the community that are fans of the game awards what they'd like to see from a not in-person game awards broadcast so they gave us a prompt, which was, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong here. What do the game awards mean to you? <laughs> yeah, that was it. I think, I think that was it. Like that. Exactly. It was something, wrote, something super corny. So corny. Don't, don't steal my word. Cause I wrote the corniest thing that's ever been created. I actually went into my scent folder and too. sifted down to look down to see what I wrote. Oh my God. Oh my God. Do we want to read out what we sent? That's what I'm saying. That's episode 100. I am not willing okay. to read out episode 100 <laughs> what I deal. sent yet. Not in any way, <laughs> shape, or form. I am thoroughly embarrassed by it. It is, it is full on like dick suckery, is what it is. No, I, yeah, same. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, we got selected. We were one of the first. How many people was it? It was. Uh, it was like 50 or something right it wasn't Ish. 100 right it was less than 100 no people? it was less than 100 people by the end of those zoom calls they went on for months and months and they would add new members all the time that would yeah uh, it got up to like a thousand people yeah and there were all kinds of guests it's a story for another day but uh yeah. we ended up in a ramshackle discord call or discord server and there were a lot of people in there that i was impartial on but there was one dude who uh, was bringing something to the table that I, I thought was kind of up my alley. I was like, this guy knows his stuff, and he seems normal compared to uh, the rest of the clientele in there. And that's that's kind of how it all started. You were making YouTube videos. I was starting to stream, and we just kind of yeah. started paying attention to each other's stuff. I I remember hopping in your stream one day, and you were playing Kingdom Hearts, and I was like, I have no idea what this game <laughs> is. Like I've never played it. I never will play it. But, you know, he's entertaining enough, so... I'll watch. Uh, Entertaining and then, you enough. know, kind of snowballed from there. So yes, yes. <laughs> you were actually the first. Yeah, you were the first person I ever watched on Twitch. I never had a Twitch account before. Um, never subscribed or followed anyone before uh, you and like Sonic. You two were like the first people I ever interacted with on Twitch. Yeah, you were doing YouTube stuff only at the time, and I was like, dude, yeah, got to be on Twitch. And now you're on Twitch, and your YouTube's blowing up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm not even putting stuff on YouTube, which kind of sucks, but, you, you know, know, time. Yes, in due time. Perhaps this very podcast show will appear on Twitch in the near future. We shall see. Hopefully. So, this is essentially episode zero of Games List, and, oh, i got to get our name right. It's Game List. It's not plural. Hey, Maybe it should Jake, be plural. Like I said, everything is all up in the air right now. We're feeling this out. We're calling this episode zero. This is our rough draft of a podcast, and the reason why we're doing this in the first place is just as streamers, content creators, we wanted to make Goaty List for 2021, and Colin and I are both big video game industry fans. We pay attention to the news, and we wanted to go over you know, what we were a fan of last year. Yep. That kind of snowballed, and I think really the way that this was sort of developed was as we started putting our list together, we were just in Discord sharing our lists and making changes and recommending uh, games that the other might have missed, and it became a fucking nightmare, I would say, <laughs> to try yep. to go back in time and um, think about all the games that we played over the last 12 months. We came up with this, this idea of... What if instead of, you know, crunching, basically, for lack of a better video game industry term, to put together a list at the end of the year, what if we spent the whole year talking about what our game of the year list was? And as we played things, we would speak about them. So that's the idea behind it, is that we're going to do a monthly podcast, which is quite rare. I feel like most are weekly, bi-weekly, not many are monthly. 
Um, but we're going to go through and talk about what we played every single month and have a running list. So this will be a weird one. What we're going to do here is we are going to do the crunch and we're going to go over what we've decided are our top games of the previous year. But in a week, we'll have our actual episode one, which will be January 2022, which will have the month in review of games that we've played from this year, games that we've played in general, as well as industry, gaming, news, anything top of mind that happened in the month of January. So that'll be a week from today. I believe it's on the yeah. 31st of January, in fact, perfectly timed. And spoiler alert, there's not much in January of this year. So No, my game played this year is quite yeah. light but there's a lot in game news so <laughs> it might be a little heavier on that end yeah of things. lots of news the game list episode one may be the news list episode one we'll see how it goes yeah but without further ado i feel like we should hop into the uh to the main event here um actually jake i do have a question we were going to talk about outer wilds at some point did you plan on that this week or next week so i will tell you that I think the I think the best way to format this one is to just go straight up game of the year. But there's a little okay. asterisk in one of our misses this year because we're both late to the party on Outer Wilds. And you'll see at the end is the Outer Wilds Echoes of the Eye DLC. So at the tail end of the show, essentially what we've created is a list of our top 10 games, then a gigantic mishmash of uh, our honorable mentions. We both have decided on our stinker of the year, which is, <laughs> I, I feel like we should have better defined our stinker of the year. Mine is like the game that I had the most faith in making my list, but didn't make it because not only is it not an honorable mention, but I am like somewhat opposed to it. Uh, it's my disappointment of the year, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, that's the same for me. And I actually took off with the one thing, other thing that I had on that list just because, yeah. uh, yeah well, we'll i need to give that game more time but yeah 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 i think everyone needs to give that game more time we'll get to that towards the end um yeah. and then we also have the things that we missed we're only two people we don't play every single video game that comes out and there are some things that have made a lot of game of the year discussions over the past year that we did not play but we owe them we owe them we'll get there one day maybe that's a stream series we'll go back and fill in the blanks but without further ado let me hit my fancy button here that hopefully works. Game of the year 2021. The list is as follows. For number 10, for myself, is Unpacking. And Colin has chosen. Bef before your eyes. <laughs> before your eyes. <laughs> We're going to get better at this. Thinking. You wait. You wait. <laughs> um, I feel like uh, I'm like a absolute monologue monster i could sit here and listen to my own voice for eight hours straight so <laughs> please interrupt me and i'll try my best to cue you up no you're fine i I, I was like asking i thought i lagged there for saying i was like did he say it or am i supposed <laughs> to say it so i could, no, I could do a better job with that it's before your eyes um before your eyes no but I, no you go you go um <laughs> <laughs> cut cut no i'm just kidding we're keeping it in we're keeping it in so there's a there's a weird thing with our lists in that it's not a combined list we each did our own top 10 so there's some overlap in the way that um everything is dispersed so some of our conversations where something that pops up on Colin's list, say, I don't know, before your eyes, might be a little higher up on my list. So we may have a brief conversation about it now and a follow-up conversation later. We might get it all out of the way now and then just touch on it later as we progress through my list. We will figure it out uh, as yeah. we go. But um, I also removed from the honorable mentions anything that was on either of our honorable mentions that appears on our list. And if I recall correctly, Colin, unpacking was on your honorable mentions? Yes, it was. Let me ask you this. Why didn't it crack the top 10? Um, if we're going to be honest, it's a puzzle game. And I don't love puzzle games. Mm -hmm. Uh and and you know it was a really great game the music was great the opening title sequence uh was phenomenal yeah um but it, it was pretty sh yeah it, it was low five vibes um but it also had kind of like the like the what, eight bit sound to it mm -hmm. um it was very nice the music was great in that game but 
Uh, the game, I played it in one sitting on stream one day, I guess, whenever I was having uh, internet troubles. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was really good. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. But by the end, I was just frustrated. And I think it's because I, I just didn't take a break and I just sat down and sure. went from start to finish with, without yeah. stopping. I definitely understand those gripes. I think this is the year more than any other year where I gained an appreciation for short little like bite-sized games. So yeah. I think for unpacking, it's almost that middle ground. That game took me like four to six hours maybe. I'm also kind of terrible at puzzle games, so it took me a little while to do. Um, but I really liked it. I think the the vibe of unpacking, like you were talking about, just that opening title screen to the very end is extremely consistent. And it does a lot of storytelling without having any narration. It lets you draw your mm-hmm. own conclusions. I think that... Um, you know, before your eyes, it's actually kind of easy to compare to in some ways when you think about its actual like size and length, but also vastly different games. The puzzle aspect mm. is fun. I'm a big Tetris guy. I like trying to fit mm. pieces together. Uh, and it did a lot for that me. That was there, house but... Tetris. Yeah. 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 Um, but unpacking just barely breaks into my top 10 just for how unique it is. I don't think there's another video game that's like it. And I think that. Can you think of another puzzle video game that tells a story? Uh, God, no, not really. I mean, just yeah. the environmental storytelling of moving and what they're moving. It's fucking yeah. awesome. Let you draw it your own great. conclusions. Um, really, really enjoyable. All right. Before Your Eyes, spoiler alert, comes up much, much higher on my list. <laughs> so um, let's talk about, maybe let's talk about Before Your Eyes now. I have two others that pop up on Colin's list that don't actually appear uh, until later on on mine that we'll save. But for Before Your Eyes, let's just broach the subject. Let's get into it. Uh, it's the first one that made your top 10. Why did it make it? Um, so the really cool thing about Before Your Eyes, which I, I had some gripes with it because I had a hard time calibrating it, but it's the first game that's really taken in like blinking, obviously, into your mm-hmm. gameplay. Um, but something about the fact that blinking something that you have to do something that it's hard to not do uh comes in as a gameplay uh mechanic and every time you blink you lose out on something you can be halfway through a conversation and blink and then not hear the rest of it um Mm -hmm. or just something along those lines uh that was a really cool mechanic to me and it felt like my eyes were dried out after playing that game because i was (laughs) just trying to hold them open the Um, the conceit of before your eyes is immensely unique and when i first heard about this game i was immediately turned off from it because if any of you guys have seen me on twitch i go by jake twitching and uh i'm a blinky motherfucker (laughs) i got some very minor facial tics and a lot of them are blinking repeatedly now that i bring it up if you're watching the video you'll see it more often but um i was worried that i would be incapable of playing this game come to find out not that big of a deal uh, yeah and especially because the fact that you're unable to keep your eyes opened as a human being for an extended period of time without feeling something physically is uh pretty pretty incredible and some of the things that it does with storytelling are phenomenal just, i mean if we're talking about unpacking being unique for being a puzzle game that tells a story before your eyes is the most unique video game that i've maybe ever played in my entire life um perhaps we should have set it up essentially all you do in this game is use your mouse or your cursor to point at something and then the only things that you can do are blink open your eyes or close your eyes uh Mm -hmm. and it tells a story in a way that i never thought possible in a video game and in it without going into spoilers we're trying to we're going to try to keep this entire podcast uh spoiler free this game fucking destroyed me. <laughs> I'm not a big, I'm not a big crier. I probably cried, you know, a handful of times. I, actually, I'm lying. When it's like a real life situation where I'm supposed to cry, I don't cry. When it's like a reality TV show, I weep like a baby. But <laughs> before your eyes fucking got me, got me good. I was a, I was a hot mess. And the fact that you need to have your eyes open for some of those things, while your eyes begin to well up, and when you cry Mm -hmm. you blink you don't think about this never in my life did i think about the idea of trying to hold your eyes open while trying to hold back tears 
ridiculous. Yeah. There was a moment where I was sitting there with my eyes open because I didn't want to miss a segment of the game while tears welled up and just streamed down my like ugly cry like you see in the memes. It was absolutely yeah. ridiculous. And, you know, I feel like um, I did miss out a little bit on that. Because uh, I'm going to be honest, I, I don't cry that much, right? Um, mm-hmm. So Allie is sitting over there and she just shook her head like, no, he don't. <laughs> um, but anyways, um, and this game, it, it really did like make me emotional. Uh, mm-hmm. But I had technical issues with it as I, yeah. there gets to be a point at the end of the game where you're swapping back and forth between places as you blink. Uh, you mm-hmm. know what I'm talking about. Uh, and it would just crash there repeatedly. Oh my God. It would crash. It would yeah, crash in that spot. And I had to replay like that 20 minute section uh, three times to finally get through it. It is one of those games. It reminds me a bit of like what remains of Edith Finch, where mm-hmm. it's a game that should almost be treated and played the same way that you would separate time to like watch a movie or a TV show where it's, it's best experience with your undivided attention and in a mm-hmm. single playthrough. I can definitely imagine yeah. that causing an issue because I, I did it one take Timmy style and just sat there start to finish. I was worried about, like I was talking about my issues with blinking. I was worried about wearing glasses throughout the whole thing. It was fucking flawless for me, but I mean, you see me, I got this fresh ass. And, <laughs> um, I actually have my entire playthrough on my YouTube, uh, and you can see some very hidden cuts where it, I had to cut it and just show the third take or whatever. Um, Expert. and also the fact that, the audio was making all sorts of issues, but professional. Uh, yeah, it, it's well, I, I don't know. It's one of those that I kind of want to delete, but it's there. Uh, I enjoyed the game, but that's why it's at my number 10. Just didn't it hit exists. me that hard. You heard it here first. All right. Look at us making it happen. Number nine. Once again, <laughs> something on Colin's list that is significantly <laughs> higher up on my list, as well as a game from me. That's on Colin's honorable mentions. Yes, it's on my honorable true? mentions. Valheim. I, uh, yeah. I think I, for Valheim, it was greatly enhanced by those that I played it with. I stream on Saturday nights with, we affectionately call them the Fellers, um, but three of my best friends from real life play video games off stream as well as on stream outside of uh, Saturday nights, and this game for about a month just ate up all of our time and it was absolutely fantastic it's not i'm not big into like crafting games or survival games but god damn god damn did this one absolutely appeal to me there is something about that procedurally generated world and the slow progression that's required to god, it's so advance slow. it is very slow um so that's the thing is like we did fall off of it but the time that i spent with that game was absolutely incredible what kind of experience did you have playing it uh so i actually picked it up recently i've been mm-hmm. playing it with uh rich freight train and mate monk and yep. and danny uh your fellers <laughs> yeah pretty much my version of the fellers i guess um <laughs> but it uh it's really good i really love the time that i've spent with it and uh they actually have a like a dedicated server going now that i haven't spent much time in because i've yep. been busy but yeah um the first i would say the first 20 hours of that game are great whenever you're beating the first boss building yeah, your base yeah. for the first time and then finally going on to the second boss but after that it's just it's such a slog sometimes it is. if you don't it have is. four people working you just don't make that progression that you need. Yeah. Yep. But it, I agree wholeheartedly. It's so fun. But it deserves a spot on my list if only for the experience that I had playing with it. Uh, if you yeah. have the right crew of people to hop in there and buckle down and actually like spend some time creating a place to live, a safe haven, it can be mm-hmm. a blast. It can really be And cool. that's that's one of the games that is made by the people that you're playing it with. So, And I, I love yeah. Freight Train and all them. Um, but I guess the game itself brought it down for me. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. If it wasn't for Evco, Squanky, and Hooper, I yeah. probably would never have played that game. But it, it kind of fell yeah. into that category of like, this looks like a fellers game. This looks like a nice Tuesday night hangout session, vibe out and build some shit together. Um, it's a great game. All right. Without spoiling how far up on my list it is, how do you feel about holding off on the Halo conversation? Oh, we'll hold off on it for sure. I got a natural segue into 
holding off on your number eight pick as well then oh <laughs> I, I can do that too <laughs> anybody that watches my stream knows about where on my list uh, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart is but um, Great game. let me tell you it's up there and we will get to it for sure um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about Final Fantasy 7 Remake Integrate and bring up a point as well about DLC on this list and remakes which I think we sort of skirted around a little bit definitely at the start of the show but uh nonetheless you initially had mass effect on your list somewhere is that correct um i did and i ended up taking it off because i didn't want remakes on there well i mean i did but i felt like there were better places to put it yeah 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 yeah. It, it deserves and maybe in the honorable mentions it's an oversight not including mass effect there but it's tough too because i didn't play mass effect legendary edition but if all of a sudden yeah, Go that's ahead. a 100% of oversight on my fault. I didn't put it in my honorable mentions. That's okay, that's okay, because if we start figuring in Mass Effect Legendary Edition, that includes Mass Effect 2, which is like my game of the year 2008. Mm-hmm. I don't know. When did Mass Effect 2 come out? Chat, help me. Also, we're live on Twitch right now. Chat's here. Mm-hmm. I'm largely ignoring them, but I love them all forever. You guys are all yeah. wonderful. I'm sorry for everything that I've missed thus far. But... um. <laughs> It is a funky thing with remakes and uh, remasters and whatnot on where they should uh, fall in this list. But with Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate, it's number eight on my list because of the additional content, the remake intermission, the episode Yuffie, essentially, that is packed in with the PS5 version of Final Fantasy VII Remake, which includes the entire beginning of the game. In addition to... (laughs) the uh base game which like mass effect 2 was my game of the year for the previous year did that come out in 2021 i think so yeah i think april right sounds right it might have been april 2020 the last three years are a blur yeah it was 2020 yeah yeah, yeah. responsible it's it's absolutely a blur but that's the problem is that if i included the base game because it came out on ps5 this year for the first time it would be number one it's the best game of the decade (laughs) It was just happened to be released two years ago. Uh, but I really loved this DLC. It's a standalone story. It's Yuffie. It is honestly pretty much all original content. It does not really pull much from the original Final Fantasy VII. And I don't mean the remake. I mean the 1997 PlayStation 1 classic. It does a good job of expanding the story the same way that the original Final Fantasy VII remake expands on the Midgar portion of Final Fantasy VII. Um, and takes a character that needed a lot of development um, and gives them that development that they deserve. I really, really enjoyed it. And the only reason it's not higher up on my list is because it's a, you know just a small piece of DLC. But 7 Remake Integrate deserves a spot on the old top 10. Um, have you even played Remake? No, no I haven't. And it, it goes along with the thing of like, I I want to, but I... I just have a hard, I have a hard time playing DLC. Like if yeah. it's not the base game, I'm probably not going to play it. And I hate DLC just because I like to complete everything. And yeah. then when a DLC makes me return, it's kind of annoying. But I want to. I'll definitely get to it at some point. Probably whenever two's announced or something, it'll make me like nostalgic for this game and yeah. make me want to go back for it. Um, yep. But I just haven't had time to get to it yet. Listen, I get it. I just think less of you. It's no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> I watched you play it for a little bit, if that makes it any better. That, that counts. That's something. That's commitment. And I, I know it has like the uh, Clash Royale type mini game in there. Mm-hmm. Um, Fort something. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Fort Condor. It's really cool. Fort Condor. Uh, yeah. And I'm assuming that mini game will end up in the uh, remake too, whenever or whatever that decides to become. We shall see. Yeah. All right, up the list we go to number seven. A lot to talk about on both of these. Now we're in now we're yeah. in uncharted territory. Our lists wildly differ in the center, and there's a, yeah. there's a little bit of overlap, but not all that much. Now I think it's worth mentioning that when we started this idea for these lists, um, we initially shared each other our list and made some recommendations of some gaps to fill so that we could kind of speak to these games. Now yeah. I am a noted uh horror video game hater i guess is the best way to say it uh but every once in a while chat does uh a number on me and gets me to check out a resident evil game 
on stream. And they're and always great streams. That's what they keep saying. Um, I loathe them. They literally scare the shit out of me. But nonetheless, I got to appreciate the game for what it is. Why is Resident Evil 8 on your list? Um, it is... It's probably like the first modern horror game that I've truly loved. Um, before Resident Evil Village, I had only played like Outlast 1 and 2, but I played it in a room full of college guys that we were just all playing it together, like screaming, scared in the dark. Mm -hmm. um, so this was the first horror game that I played on stream uh, and something that made me want to dive into the Resident Evil world. Uh, the gameplay was fun. It was interesting. I was scared, but it always made me want to keep playing, uh, which is very rare yeah. for horror games. Um, I get that. But yeah, I, I think just the interaction between my chat and playing this game and uh, just the setting. I don't know. I, I, I think this was a phenomenal game with a great story. Uh, and it's actually super beautiful on the PS5. I, I yeah. don't know about the other versions, so but... I jumped in and I played the PlayStation 5 demos that they had available. And they were the village demo and the castle demo. And I honestly had a pretty good time playing both of them just from like a gameplay and game development standpoint. I think that they yeah. were both very, very sound. I had a great time. Mm -hmm. Um, just running through that world, I think it looked really good. The gameplay itself was smooth. The puzzle solving was nice. There is like an air of tension every single time uh, yeah. I'm doing anything because I feel like something could pop out on me at any fucking moment, which is terrifying. But nonetheless, uh, I, I respect that game for what it is. And all things considered, I played, I played like an hour and a half, two hours of Resident Evil 7 for a stream about a year ago. And then yeah. I hopped into Resident Evil 8 just for that demo. I was probably in there for 45 minutes. And not as scary, I guess. What is yeah, like? it's, a, it's a lot less horror horror, like mm -hmm. horror horror than Resident Evil 7 is. 7 yeah. is terrifying. I agree wholeheartedly. <laughs> I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah. But uh, I certainly understand why that game is as popular as it is. And I think that there's definitely a lot to love there. Yeah, it's a it's a great game. It got me into the Resident Evil series. Um, and also, you know, I said earlier, I hate puzzle games, uh, but this game has a lot of puzzles in it and it I does. really enjoyed all of them. I never actually had a problem with any of them. Yeah, 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 I get that. Um, Resident Evil, I played Resident Evil 4 back in the day and the puzzles are kind of the, the game would be boring without puzzles. You'd be doing a lot of just running yeah. through monsters, making it an action game. And I think it's got a nice thing. It's almost like, for some reason, I always equate Resident Evil to like Legend of Zelda, which is maybe a good selling point for you on Zelda. You're not a big first party Nintendo guy, but um, Zelda does the same thing where it would just be all action and combat and no fun if there was no puzzles involved. But it's that sort of weird in world progression where you're trying to solve things with the things that are around you that I think enhances that game and puts it a step above. So I see a lot of similarities there. Um, yeah. Anything else you want to add on Resident Evil Village? Um, I'm ready for that DLC to come out, even though I said I hate yeah. DLCs. Um, yeah. we'll see how it That's goes. That's been rumored for, uh, for a long time. I'm assuming at this point it's going to be either yeah. non-existent or gigantic. Well, Those and the they unveiled options. it with just a black screen with like Comic Sans DLC yeah, coming yeah, yeah. soon. It's, we swear we're still stupid. working on this thing. And that was, I mean, what, almost a year ago now at this point that they announced that was coming? I, I don't know. It's been a while. Yeah. But in due time. Now, this is an interesting yeah. one for you and I. Yeah. It takes two. We played yeah. this entire video game together. This is like the first the stream that we did together. Yeah, and I was super nervous. I think that was the first stream I ever had on Twitch. That was before that I That was actually the first time streaming. you were ever live on any network was on my channel. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. And then look. Then look what happened. Wow. By the end of the playthrough, you were already a Twitch streamer. Was that is that right? Is that true? I think so. I'm pretty sure oh, at the beginning goodness. you had never been on Twitch before, and by the end of it, you were officially on Twitch. Whole thing. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. Yep. Um, this game blew me away, to, to say the least. Uh, I'm surprised it didn't make your game of the year list. I think what this game does, I'm into very unique video games, and mm -hmm. I don't think there's much on the table that's similar to It Takes Two. I think that there's not. 
The coolest thing that It Takes Two did was outside of their video game. I think it is absolutely fucking genius to sell a copy of this game with a downloadable copy for free so that whoever you want to yeah. play with can hop in on your game. Genius. Genius. And the yeah, fact that it is... Sure. I mean, it makes sense. If somebody wants to play this game solo but doesn't have anybody to play it with, you need the opportunity to say, oh, hey, come over and play this with me. Because regardless of if you play it online or split screen, the screen is split. And the yeah. game mechanics are all two-player required. I, the only way that you would be able to play this game single player is if you did the uh, Sakurai thing where he sits there with two hands and two controllers and <laughs> plays both of like them when use he's doing smash. Use your toes damage. or something. Yeah, wild. No, none of that on stream. <laughs> Little no, pig's no cam. Stuff. We'll see. Um, but what did you think about It Takes Two? Uh, I loved it, man. I, I'm not entirely sure how it didn't hit my top ten. Uh, I loved the time we played it it together um it it changes its mechanics every level which keeps it really fresh um mm -hmm. it, it every level had like a different theme specifically the clock level i really enjoyed i don't know what it was about it but i really liked the clock level the clock level uh, had some really interesting vibes in it yeah super yeah and it had like a slow-mo it was like it was crazy and you know who doesn't love divorce you know we, easy we've all easy been there subject matter <laughs> yeah yeah and uh I, I, it, it's in my honorable mentions, but I think what it in, ultimately comes down to is I, most of my games are just single player focused. I think it's mm -hmm. just who I am as a yeah. player. It's nothing against the game. I adored the game and like super happy we played it together. Um, but I don't know how it didn't make it. I, I really don't. I think what was interesting about this game, and I think that some people knock it for in some ways uh but i would never do so is this game is fucking big oh it's so <laughs> long you, it does when you start out on this game it does feel like something that's going to be one of those like four to six hour adventures and it ends yeah. up becoming so much more uh it's yeah. really mind-blowing how much they packed into this it definitely is the gift that keeps on giving um mm -hmm. for better or worse i can understand where some people were kind of ready for it to be over by the end but i for one was impressed with how much it offered and it wasn't just like tacked on levels i mean it's easy for super mario brothers to add an extra world it's just you know okay now you're in a desert and you're going forward this game mechanically uh adds something new basically every world that you go to which is I think really, really impressive. I think they did a fucking yeah. fantastic job with it. Joseph Ferris, man. And, yeah, Joseph Ferris, man. And his, I expected it to be shorter because A Way Out, his previous title, was kind mm -hmm. of shorter. Yep. Um, phenomenal as game well. as well. Yeah, um, I haven't played Brothers. I need to get to it. But um, potential stream. It was it was a little longer than I thought it was going to be, but you know, it gave us an extra stream or two. So I, I'm not mad about it at all. I still need to go yep. back and get all the all the trophies on it. Um, Yep, but you know it was really good. Makes sense. Nice. Look at us cruising through our lists. Shit's yeah, about to get great. weird, Chet. The first time <laughs> ever in the history of streaming, YouTube, podcasting content, we we're about to talk about at the same time. Life is strange. Two true colors. Collins number six and my number six, which honestly could have been higher. Cruising blast. Dude, cruising oh. blast. Oh, oh. Uh, Do you have any experience with the cruising series? No, not at all. I, I saw your little helicopter flying over all these jumps oh. and fires Oof. and flames, and Oof. that's about it. <laughs> I, I don't think I can even really do this game justice. It's one of those like if you know, you know type of situations. Cruising blast yeah. is an arcade racer in its purest form. It is a complete throwback to the old cruising series. It's um. Cruisin USA, Cruisin World, Cruisin Exotica. This was arguably like the fourth one. It actually came to arcades in 2017 or 2018 and has been available as like a, you know, sit down driving game for a pretty long time. And it wasn't until the pandemic hit and obviously they stopped seeing returns on their investment of these gigantic sit down driving machines that they decided to port it over to a console. Fairly bare Wait. bones port. So yeah. this was from an arcade machine that's yeah. a port to the Switch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. So it's one of those things where you're supposed to insert 50 cents so that you can play a race, and then it's hooked yeah. up to three other machines, and you and all your friends sit down and drive your car. 
It's like the old school double tap the gas to do a little boost and go off the jump. There's not much to it. Uh, it's simple. It is effective. It's fast paced racing in absolutely ridiculous scenarios. Um, it It is just a very pure gamer ass video game. I don't want to go on too long about it. Chat is already so sick of me talking about cruising past <laughs> over the past year. Uh, I streamed it three times, which is like two more times than I stream most things. Yeah. Um, it also, I think deserves to have some recognition for having just the coolest fucking theme song that's ever existed. I play it as an intro to my streams all the time. Um, but it is, it is just really good. If you're listening to this and you've ever played any of the console Fast and Furious games, the developers of Cruisin' Blast originally worked on those Cruisin' games. Cruisin' went on hiatus, and then they did the Fast and Furious video games for a few years, which actually play fairly similarly. I've actually never played those Fast and Furious games, and I didn't know they were developed by the same people. But now I want to go back and play those cursed video games and see what's going on. Should be, should be absolutely fantastic, but... I'll leave it at that. If you have any interest in the racing genre, specifically the arcade racing genre, check out Cruisin' Blast. Please, please buy it. It's also getting updated to have online multiplayer. That's a knock. The, the fact that that game doesn't have online multiplayer is tough, but the fact that it's a ported arcade game makes sense. Uh, maybe one day I'll have the fellers over to do some split-screen racing. We'll see. Yeah. In due time. Let's talk about Life is Strange. Man, life is strange. You know, I've I've said it before. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think I've mentioned it to you before. The first Life is Strange is by far one of my favorite games of all time. Um, I think about it at least on a weekly basis. Um, and I actually never played Life is Strange 2. So when I saw Life is Strange 2 Co True Big Colors fan. was coming out. Yeah, yeah, I know, right? Big <laughs> I love the adore the first one. just won't play the second. Um, I actually have it digital and physical now, but I haven't played it yet. <laughs> Um, but anyways, the, when I saw true colors was coming out and she was like, my power is empathy. I was like, yeah, oh I know the power. Of empathy. This is, this is going to, this game is going to be just terrible, like just awful. Um, but it came out, it got good reviews and I was like, you know what? I'm going to play it. So I got it, uh, booted it up and finished it in under 24 hours. Um, nice man. How long this was the game, actual gameplay? Um, god 10 hours maybe maybe uh maybe 12 ish uh mm -hmm. there's five episodes so maybe like two and a half hours two two and a half hours per episode yep um but it was it was so good uh the characters that you meet the conversations that you have alex is a phenomenal character uh very in yeah 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 protagonist you know she's more than a character um <laughs> Main but uh <laughs> the main uh, <laughs> uh it i don't know man it just tugs at your little heartstrings uh yeah. there's definitely some corny parts where she's playing her guitar with her brother at the start or uh, yep. correction they're playing air guitars Ooh. um it is Ooh. the corniest thing ever uh <laughs> and it makes me cringe but you know it's okay it's gone quick enough uh there's an entire chapter where you're doing a live action role play and you're walking around the town pretending it's like a medieval village or something. And it's, you know, it's corny, hmm. but it's, it's good. It, it, it changes up, uh, from the previous stories. It actually includes the town that's semi open world sometimes. Interesting. Um, man, I, I can't say enough good things about this game. Um, is there actual I'll, gameplay in this game? Cause it feels like a game where it's just conversations and story. Um, the gameplay is walking from one place and going to another kind of, and like clicking a button whenever you're near something to, uh, interact with it. There are okay. small environmental puzzles, um, yep. but there, it, there's nothing too difficult. It's kind of, I'm trying to think of something to equate it to. It's not that different from a Telltale game. Um, okay, okay. Yeah. but it's really good. It doesn't tie into any of the previous stories. Um, they all remain pretty separate, but there is one character from this, Stephanie, who appeared in the prequel for the original Life is Strange, hmm. um, but there's no like direct tie-ins to the others. Um, so as somebody who's never played a Life is Strange and is extremely opposed to doing so, <laughs> um, if there had to be a jumping, on, uh, jumping in point, would you say 
this is the place to do it? Or do you think that I go back to the first one? Because there's a remaster on the horizon yeah. in like days, maybe? It, February, February 1st. 1st. Yeah. Yes, wait till February 1st, play the first game, and ball your eyes out. Uh, that game was just oh my tragic. I've already but... established I'm very into doing that. <laughs> well, it'll be the game for you. I I love it. Uh, I'm buying the remaster as soon as I can. Nice. I'm playing through it, and All right. I adore that game. Potential stream. Very nice. Yeah. All right. We've reached the halfway point, and it is time now to continue. Let's reveal where we are at. Number five. Now things are wild because I feel like this yeah. is a big gap for both of us. You didn't touch Psychonauts, right? I haven't touched it. Psychonauts 2, of course, and you chose Hell Let Loose, which despite getting for free, I still have not played. Let me let me just throw it over to you. Hell Let Loose, would you have... Let me ask you this. Would you have known about this video game if it was not free on PlayStation Plus? Uh, absolutely not. No. I hear you. No way. Um, I hear you. No. <laughs> me either. <laughs> I, I they, sometimes I wonder how I got so hooked on this game. Uh, I actually was playing it today. Um, this was my second most played game this year. Hell, that oh, loose. Shit. Yeah, really. Uh, yeah. Um, it. What? It what ha is like, it exactly? So, Hell Let Loose is a hyper realistic military sim set Jeez. in World War II, and you do. <laughs> realist you do like uh historic world war ii battles like rushing the beaches of normandy or utah beach or um hill 400 or stuff like that um and it's hmm. super slow like you mm -hmm. move very slow uh but it's very punchy like you, you're getting gunned down on the beach and you're respawning and getting gunned down on the beach again and just Lots of people have complaints about it because it's like, oh, I'll run for 30 minutes because the maps are giant. They're like mm -hmm. humongous. Um, I'll run it's for like 30 minutes and die. all the time? Yes, it's an online game. There's no campaign. Uh, this is like a weird one in my lineup because it's just a pure multiplayer game uh, that yeah. requires like... It requires teamwork because each per like each role has like a job to do, and if it's not done correctly, uh, then you'll lose. Um, but it's fifty v fifty, uh, so it's quite large battles. You're trying to take objectives, um, and, and whatnot. You know there are certain different yeah. uh, game modes that are are you know we don't have to get in the weeds explaining them. Uh, but it's just a game that has captivated me in how simple but like in depth it clean? is simple yeah and clean? it's so it's so simple simple and clean um it's so fun i've met lots of really cool people on there i was actually playing with a friend from belgium and south africa today that i met on that game uh today i almost spit out my delicious pepsi cola <laughs> today <laughs> you're still playing this yeah. right now yeah i played it today wow yeah wow it, it's so good it's it just it's a phenomenal game um i would encourage anyone to try it but try it with a friend um because it, it's it's difficult to pick up it is it's difficult to pick yeah. up and it's slow so it's not like call of duty you're not going to be rushing into a gunfight um yeah yeah it's such a unique experience that i adore it does sound interesting i'm not opposed to checking it out at some point it just didn't find a uh time to to slide it in probably because i was too busy playing psychonauts 2 which is yeah a game that so i'm a fan of the original psychonauts i played that when it came out as a kid and beat it i probably played it through two or three times over the years in between now and then and when psychonauts 2 came out i was ready to love the game and i played it for like two or three hours and i kind of fell off of it and it was not on my top 10 list until we started making our top 10 list and when we did that i went through and i wrote down you know pretty much everything that i played this year and then as we were kind of trading lists and trying to figure out where things should go and what the other one should play i was like i gotta give psychonauts 2 more time why did i fall off of this fucking game and i went back to it and crushed crushed it it is so fantastically good i mean everybody that knows me as a gamer knows that i'm obsessed with like platforming video games and this is the cream of the crop. I would say if there's one thing holding it from being like a top three game of the year, it's that it is very story heavy. It's a little self-indulgent. It's the the old 
Tim Schafer double fine, lots of like, you know, tongue in cheek commentary on fourth wall breaking um, bits, but it still hits exactly the way that it needs to hit. Um, it's got an art style mm -hmm. that is just to fucking die for. It feels in some ways so similar to the first one in a way that's unique because it, Psychonauts 2 looks the way that I picture Psychonauts 1 looking in my head. If I were to boot up Psychonauts 1, it would not look as good as Psychonauts yeah. 2 does, of course, because it's an insanely beautiful game. But something about modern graphics and this art style, it just plays, man. It is so good. The powers that you learn and the actual platforming itself is super tight, really, really crisp. The cast of characters is absolutely insane. The story that it tells is maybe the least interesting part to me and i think that perhaps i'll probably regret saying this out loud that i've maybe grown out of some of the comedy that they're trying to push upon me in psychonauts but yeah when all those things come together it just works so well it is uh i think very easily the best platformer of the year i mean we'll find out we got four more to go on this list uh there is another platformer on my list but this is a, a very pure platformer it, it plays just the way you'd want to play a game if you were expecting a platformer, whereas the other one's got some other things going on. You might know what I'm so, talking about if you've listened to this whole thing. <laughs> I Well, I have a couple questions for you. One, <laughs> um, I haven't played the first Psychonauts, and the reason I haven't played this one is because I feel like I should. Like, should I, or is this a good jumping on point? Can I go play this game and get out what I need to get out from it uh, you know to be again, honest it it's a uh it's a tough it's a tough ask um they do a good job of recapping the story but i think the fact that the story is the part that's the least appealing to me mm -hmm. makes me think that i don't know what holds it back it's, it's a funky game in that way where you will understand and you will enjoy the story more if you've played the original games in in addition to the regular psychonauts one there's also psychonauts rhombus, rhombus of, ruin. of ruin which is a vr exclusive game from a couple years ago that i did not check out either so the recap at the beginning of the game was important for me because that is extremely impactful to the at least the beginning of psychonauts 2 so the answer to your question the short version that i'm dancing around here is that you can absolutely jump into psychonauts 2 without playing one and in fact i would probably recommend doing it that way and you'd still find a lot to love if you're into platforming video games i mean you're a gigantic listen we're an hour into this uh podcast almost and uh we haven't mentioned sly cooper a single time i know mostly because of I, some dormant franchise for almost 10 years but nonetheless i was actually that's... gonna bring sly cooper up with my second question <laughs> yeah yeah go ahead no i was just gonna say like you know that like i i love cy cooper and like yeah um cartoony platformers think, yeah i i think when it comes down to it if you are a fan of the platforming genre you owe it to yourself to check this out it is beyond okay. fun if you like going around and collecting things and finding secrets and progressing through challenging platforming activities with a little bit of combat it is pristine fantastic fantastic video game well deserved uh, to break the top five. What's the trophy list look like on it? Who Is knows? it difficult? No one pays attention to trophies. No, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's a first party Microsoft game. This is on a Game Pass, baby. Free. But, uh, nah, bro. I gotta get them trophies uh, on PlayStation. I hear, I hear Those achievements are waiting for you. Microsoft is starting to rule the world. You might want to get a head start before you're forced. Unfortunately, man. <laughs> Alright, what do you say we move on to number four? Good for it. Now this is where this is the last opportunity we'll have to have like thoroughly separate video game choices I think because we're going to start having a lot of overlap as we break into the top three but with number four we'll let you go with Guardians of the Galaxy first my, cho my choice is Final Fantasy 14 Endwalker um, okay. but we'll, we'll break into that after tell me about Guardians of the Galaxy well, I, th I think we all remember the Square Enix E3 showcase that we were all absolutely put on our butt by about how amazing <laughs> this game looked, right? Um, uh. No, I remember being extremely underwhelmed by that 
that showing uh, and all the showings leading up to this release. Uh, it wasn't until I listened to a couple different podcasts and read some reviews that I was like, maybe I actually want to play this Guardians of the Galaxy game. Mm -hmm. um, I think this game suffers not in the gameplay. I'll get to the gameplay in a minute. I think sure. I think the game's uh, like a 9 out of 10. It's, it's so good. But I think this I game suffers so. fr from the uh, superhero porn star type thing where everyone it's kind of like the avengers game everyone is so used to seeing the avengers on the big screen and seeing yeah. guardians of the galaxy on the big screen that whenever they see a different representation of them they get mm -hmm. a little put off they get kind of like the uncanny valley feeling just yeah, instantly yeah. so it instantly gives you like that little like feeling of disgust and i it's just what it is. Uh, I feel like Spider-Man doesn't uh, get affected by this as much because we've seen so many different iterations of him and Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield and then Tom Holland and then yep. Yuri Lowenthal and PlayStation and everything. Um, but I feel like other superheroes struggle from that. And I think Guardians of the Galaxy definitely did on its reveal. Uh, I think people yeah. were like, oh, that looks weird. That's not what we are used to. So I, I don't like it, right? And then from there, it just kind of grew from a bad attitude. But once the uh, once the game came out and the reviews started dropping and I finally got my hands on it this past break, uh, I guess, I don't know, about a month ago. Man, this game, the story in this game, the characters, Rocket, uh, Peter, Gamora, Groot, Drax, all of them, they are such well-written characters. There's so much banter in this game and so much dialogue that... I want to hear every single bit of it. Normally, I'll put on like a podcast while I'm playing games, uh, mm -hmm. but I didn't do. I didn't put on a podcast during this one because I wanted to hear all the dialogue. Um, the gameplay itself is, yeah, I mean, it's it's okay. It's nothing yeah. to you know write home about, but uh, it, it gets you through the game. Um, it, it you keep unlocking things as you go through and you only control Peter Quill, which I really think was a good idea. Uh, yep. so that you could focus more in on that than having half baked other mechanics for other characters. Um, the story Avengers of this game style. goes places. Yeah, exactly. Avengers style. <laughs> um, people were automatically put off of this game because of the Avengers. Uh, and I hate it. Um, but the story goes places I did not expect at all. It has characters that I didn't expect, but I was super like stoked to see. Mm -hmm. um, it it's a phenomenal game. I love it. Uh, I've got the platinum for it. Uh, as yeah. many of the games on the list, I do. Um, I've done everything there is to do in that game. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> crazy, crazy. Um, actually, my top, my top uh, five, six. Six out of my ten games have I have the platinum on. Jesus Christ! Uh, and a couple of those are on Xbox and PC. So we'll get to it later. But I actually got my first platinum trophy with one of the games that's on. You this did, list. and it's my first you and did. only platinum trophy or achievement or any game that I've ever one hundred percent completed, which is and it's big. I'm but, proud uh, of you. I'm I gotta say, I think I owe Guardians of the Galaxy more time. I streamed about an hour and a half to two hours of Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy. Uh, with the fellers, in fact, and perhaps it was the wrong environment for me to check that game out because I mostly focused on gameplay, which was okay. The banter yeah. was starting to hit for me, but there was a lot going on that I wasn't vibing with. And it's interesting because I think there were a lot of people that expected the game to play out that way and were pleasantly surprised the same way that you are because I would call this game, honestly, maybe maybe this is an incorrect judgment to pass on it but would this be like the sleeper hit of the year i think everyone pegged this game as a 7 out of 10 and yeah. it ended up coming out to pretty much like 8.5s and 9s like people love this game yeah. uh and it, didn't it, expect to i think it was definitely a pleasant surprise for a lot of the people that decided to give it the time of day and i think that in addition to the people that were already willing to do so once the buzz got around that this thing was actually something pretty special it got uh, mm -hmm. kind of a second wind and mm -hmm. it's one of those games where people were impartial on it for quite a while and then once it actually dropped anybody that actually progressed through the game feels the same way as you so didn't make my list yeah. didn't make my honorable mentions um and I, I tried to give it a fair shake but maybe i need to go back to it i'm not opposed to that game it's not something that where i'm like i'm never playing that again which is a lot of games well I play. and i also have to say like the first three to four hours are the most boring um yeah. it, it picks up after that 
Um, mm-hmm. But this this definitely was a sleeper hit of the year. I, I mean, it got down to like thirty bucks a couple weeks after releasing. That's when um, I grabbed it. <laughs> but it's definitely worth it. One hundred percent worth it. It's a phenomenal game, and I I hope you yep. play it so we can talk about it. Perhaps in a future episode. But for now, it's fucking monologue time, baby. <laughs> now this had we're we're officially in this could have been game of the year territory, and the problem with Final Fantasy XIV that you'll see not just here, but I think probably industry-wide, is it's nearly impossible to get an impartial review of this video game. Anybody that makes it to Endwalker, which is the fourth expansion for Final Fantasy XIV, a game that's base version is honestly a remake, brand new version of the original game, it's a mess. Do your history lesson on Final Fantasy XIV. You'll know what I'm speaking about. But nonetheless, this game has like a 200 plus hour requirement to even scratch the surface of. You will not start seeing Endwalker content until you've progressed through the entirety of the story of A Realm Reborn, Heaven Sword, Stormblood, and Shadowbringers. I think that's all of them. And the base game. That being said, anybody that's reviewing it has already put in such a time commitment that they're probably into it. Even at these big, you know, gaming establishments and um, companies and corporations, the people that are hired to review it are people that play Final Fantasy XIV. So it's tough to give an unbiased opinion of. If you don't like MMOs, this isn't the video game for you. Um, That is also to say that if you don't like MMOs, if you're not completely opposed to them or if you've never checked one out before it's arguably the best point of entry for this type of video game it is a fantastic payoff to a 10 year video game development cycle uh it hits story points that you could not imagine it introduces new classes that are some of the best out of all that have been Put out and it comes with quality of life enhancements for a game that everybody already loves i will try my best not to go any further just know that i could very easily speak about this game for hours and hours and i think it is worth mentioning that i didn't even start in earnest final fantasy 14's I didn't progress through the base of the game until the beginning of 2021, at which point I progressed through all of those 200 hour requirements of uh, all of those expansions to get to Endwalker for launch so that I could enjoy it along with everybody. And my playtime as of recording right now for Final Fantasy 14 is 1,459 hours. What? Yeah, I'm sorry. My I I I was I was like, my eyes were glazed <laughs> almost, over as you were talking about it. But like when you I said that to, hour count, I need to like look at that again on Steam. Yeah, one thousand one thousand four hundred and fifty nine point nine hours. So it's actually one thousand four hundred and fifty five hours. Um, it is a very very good video game, and if you're in the midst of a pandemic where it's safer to be inside than it is to go outside, it sure is a wonderful place to sink some fucking time. Um, you that being said not my game of the year <laughs> it is you could easily the game that i've played the most in my life though oh my god dude i'm just you could you could 100 uh dying light two three times in that amount of time yes but only three times <laughs> oh my god that's a, that's okay that's next, okay well that's next one my, my question for you why like what made you look at this game and say, yeah, I want to dump 1400 hours into this. Like, like what Nothing keeps made it new? Say what that. A- I did not know that it would become what it is in my life. Um, but I think with Endwalker, it's just representation of a game that came out this year, an expansion that came out this year, which all intents and purposes is its own full game, obviously time commitment wise and story wise. But what it really boils down to is, I'm a Final Fantasy fan, and this was kind of the one that got away, or I had played Final Fantasy, I discovered Final Fantasy around Final Fantasy X, and then went back and did my homework and played some of the great 7, 8, 9, 6, 1 for a little bit, tactics, things along those lines, and then I followed the story, so I played, I skipped 11, the first MMO in the Final Fantasy series, and I said, nope, that's not for me, I played 12, I played 13, I skipped 14, played 15, and I anxiously anticipate 
uh, Final Fantasy 16, but 14 was the one that I was kind of like, I, I don't think I want to play an MMO. I had played World of Warcraft enough to know that I was into it, but not that into it. Um, even in all my years playing WoW, I played not nearly as much as I've played Final Fantasy 14 in the last year, year and a half. Um, so the answer is being a Final Fantasy fan. And from an MMO standpoint, there is more to enjoy in this compared to other ones because it does play out, especially expansion and story-wise, like a regular Final Fantasy game or a traditional JRPG. You have a character, a main character that you create, voiceless protagonist. You have a party of characters that are defined for you that play different roles, and then you can optionally progress through the dungeons uh, with other people. But the sense of community, the fact that I joined a... Um, FC, which is a free company, which is like a guild in Warcraft, uh, added a lot to it, met a bunch of cool people from around the world, and just really sunk my time into it. I didn't expect it to do to me what it did. Um, and I still play it, you know. Honestly, since Endwalker, I, I fell... I did a lot of prep for Endwalker. I played this game, uh, obviously, for a thousand hours. And then once Endwalker came out, I had started to fall off until Endwalker came, and then I powered through that story again. And since then, I've started to fall off again. I think that I might end up playing it uh, less this year than I did last year, I would hope. But, um, oh, oh, no. Less than 1,400 whatever's hours. Whatever's next for Final Fantasy XIV is a, uh, a shoe-in for me. But just well, a ridiculously unique video gaming experience. Can't I... recommend it enough. I just want to say, I hope that one day I can love a video game that much to put 1,400 hours into it. I didn't know um, it was possible. It is out of... Uh, which... Uh, yeah, that's insane. Anybody that knows me knows that I'll play a game for 40 minutes on stream and get sick of it and start something else. I mean, the <laughs> yeah. I, the fact that I put in the time is uh, unique to this video game for sure. I've probably put about that much into Skyrim on all my playthroughs over the yeah, years. You. But... At least I'm but I don't have people. a, yeah, I don't have a timer <laughs> for it. Yeah, I'm I'm just running around talking to Hilda for hours. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the only other game that comes close for my Steam playtime is uh, Risk, <laughs> like the board game Risk. <laughs> in the Risk past is year. Great, that didn't though. come out this year. That came out in God knows when, early 1900s. I don't Probably. know. Risk historians, please correct me in chat or in the comments. <laughs> Who could tell? Let's move on. We're in our top three, baby. We're fucking yeah, moving. Yeah. Let's, All right. let's do it. All right. Now we're going to circle back a little bit here because there's some retreading. Before your eyes landed at number three for me, I already talked about how it devastated me in the best of possible ways. So I'm going to let you just take it away with Deathloop. Let me tell you what I know about Deathloop. Are you cool with that? Yeah. I know no, I've for talked it. for Final Fantasy about for about 10 minutes now, but I want to keep It's okay. I'm, I'm waking you. up from your Final Fantasy talk now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Deathloop is developed by Arcane which is mm. one of your favorite video game developers, correct? Absolutely, yeah. What's what's the is it your favorite game of all time? Dishonored? Uh no, not my favorite, my second favorite. Um I I would have to put them in series. Like my first favorite series is Sly Cooper. Yeah, my yeah. second favorite series is Dishonored. Um yep. yeah. And this is at its core a time loop game that is different than what Arcane has done in the past. They did not have the time loop thing going on, correct? Yeah, correct. They there were much more linear levels. Um, you weren't revisiting places as much as you are now. Uh, yep. Much more assassin-like than Guns of Blazing. Got it. Got it. And this time around, it was developed for PlayStation 4 exclusively, despite in the middle of its development, it was purchased by Microsoft. So future uh, of Deathloop is question mark? Yeah, so it, it was... De they, they, uh, PlayStation made a deal with Bethesda. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, I should say Arcane, Lyon, um, but Bethesda. They're owned by Bethesda. Um, that Deathloop would be a PS5 and PC exclusive. So a PS5 console exclusive. Um, and then a couple months before it came out, they were like, hey, uh, actually, we're going to buy you. Uh, <laughs> but Microsoft just just up and buys Bethesda for what? The classic Microsoft uh, 7 move. billion? Yeah. Classic. God crazy so why does yeah. it crack the uh why does it crack the top three and how does it compare to your favorite arcane projects um well uh, it's a little bit cheating honestly just because death loop at its core is dishonored 
Um, the powers, the abilities that you have, they're almost ripped directly out of Dishonored. There's a couple different ones. Huh. Um, the art style, while it's not directly like Dishonored, it I don't know, like the graphic sheen to it, I don't even know how to explain it. It just has so much Dishonored DNA, and I adore Dishonored. Um, but on on its own, it's it stands on its own, one hundred percent. I uh, yet again, I say I hate puzzle games, but this entire game is a puzzle of trying to figure out how to solve the loop. Um, but thankfully, it keeps track of their like lines tracing from one clue to the next of what to do and exactly where to go next. So it kind of guides you, which I appreciate because I didn't want to go through it because um, there are four times of the day, morning noon afternoon and evening um and there are four locations so technically there are 16 well roughly 16 locations that you can go to uh based mm -hmm. on time of day um and certain clues are in certain places and puzzles are solved in certain places at certain times uh and your end goal is to line up all of the uh i forgot what they're called um i don't know Bad all guys. of the bosses yeah sure <laughs> uh what, your goal is to line them all up to get them all in one go, to kill them all in one go. Why you can't do that at the start is because you might kill someone in the beach in the morning, but whenever you go to the cliff side, it automatically changes to afternoon. So while you were going to the cliff side, maybe they went back to the beach, right? So you have yeah. to put things into play to get them all lined up to where you can get them in one day and then break the loop. Um, the gameplay is great. The story is really good up until the very end, and it kind of falls short in the last minute, like literally the last minute. Weird. Um, there, there are well, hints. Don't say why, but okay. That's oh, no, 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 no. Um, it, it's not the worst. It's not the worst thing ever. Um, but there are hints that it, it takes place in the same universe as Dishonored, so that excites yeah. me because they oh, were going to like end Dishonored. Like Evidently, the last uh, little standalone expansion was its own thing. Um, and that uh, was it. But it does have hints that it takes place in the universe of Dishonored. So I, that's hopeful. It um, looks and it's, it's just visually a... distinct from Dishonored, though. Um, yeah. But it's a game it, with, it's got some fucking visual flair, if I do say so myself. It looks oh, yeah. pretty. Yeah. The, the, like, the 60s retro style. Um, yeah. It's definitely extremely unique, very pretty, but I don't know, something I guess you can just kind of see in, like, maybe just me, like, in the landscape, in the architecture, I can just see the Dishonored influence, mm -hmm. um, and even in that Dishonored influence, Dishonored was influenced by Half-Life, so we're really seeing Half-Life influence um, going through here, um, but it's just, it's such a phenomenal game, um, yet again, I have the Platinum on it. Uh, I enjoyed every second of it. It's multiplayer, so well, it's kind of multiplayer. You you can invade people and try to kill them, uh, and they can invade you. That's also part of the ripple. Is Juliana's constantly, cool, yeah. yeah. Juliana could show up at any moment and just ruin you and kill you, and you have to restart the loop. Um, but you know, it's kind of a roguelike. Kind of, I I would say it has enough DNA of a roguelike to consider it one. Um, yeah. but man, it's it's so good. I love it. Uh, how long did it take you for the platinum? Um, maybe twenty-ish hours. Not too long. It wasn't obnoxiously long. Hmm. Not so bad. I mean, it's not like fourteen hundred hours or anything, but it sounds like you got a lot. Out yeah. Of it. No. 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 I could only <laughs> platinum that what um, five times fourteen, so like right, right. two hundred and thirty. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. Different Jesus. accounts spread it out. Yeah. Nice. Death loop. Death loop. Honestly is a really big miss for me it is mm. i'm more interested in that than i am in the dishonored series and i have a lot of respect for arcane i listened to uh an interview with the developers of death loop and they talked a little bit less about death loop less about um dishonored in particular but more just about their studio and their philosophy of like how they create video games uh yeah. in this interview i think it was a min max interview where he kind of dissed legend of zelda breath of the wild for some of their design which is like a game that everybody regards as like the best designed video game of all time. And he brought up some very valid concerns about the way that that game was structured. And I thought it was extremely insightful and it made me want to check out their work. So death loop is one that I'll get to, I'll get to. Yeah. In due and time. I will say it's at, it's at three because I was expecting dishonored three. Right. And that's not what yeah. I got. I got death loop. Um, and I love it. 
Um, but it's it's not it's not Dishonored, and that's yeah. not its fault. But I love Dishonored so much. I get it. I definitely get it. It is um, certainly on my radar, and it remains to be played. But uh, I think in the near future, I will probably get to it, and we'll probably talk about it on the show. I feel like it's going to be exciting going forward as we do more of these episodes of you know the the episodes that we do in the future will be structured um, even more loosely than what we're doing here today, and a lot of it is going to be a casual conversation of what we've been playing. And I'm excited for us to fill some of the gaps that each of us have in each other's favorite games. And Deathloop is one that I could see myself getting to this year, uh, just so I yeah, can have a nice spoiler filled discussion with you on uh, how I saw it all play out. So for looking sure. forward to it. What do you say, number two, the penultimate choices of game of the year? penultimate all right i love that word shit's getting weird that's one of my favorite words ask anybody yeah. in my chat they hate it when i say it i nope. i say it a lot at work and there's a girl there that <laughs> hates when i say it yeah yep all right so now some of this conversations that we skipped earlier will be had yeah Starting with halo you go infinite. for it halo infinite what is your history with halo um I got a 360 in 2013 ish. Mm -hmm. Um, that was the first time I had like that generation of consoles, uh, played through all the halos that were out at that time. And then a couple of years later, when I finally got a one, I played through, uh, uh, halo five and I love halo. I love, um, halo four specifically. That is my all time favorite. um, you can't see, but I'm making a stink face right now. I I can't I can't <laughs> see. <laughs> I I love Halo Four though. It tells it tells the best story out of all of them. Um, I and I stand by that. Um, the Four story between face. Cortana and Master Chief. Uh, that's what's important. Um, Tale is but uh, <laughs> yeah, I I love Halo, but I've never been big into multiplayer Halo. I only got into multiplayer in Infinite. And I actually haven't played in quite a while. I'm still stuck like halfway through the battle pass. Got it. I mean, it's an interesting history with Halo, and I feel like it makes sense why it came in where it did, which is, I believe, number nine on your list of Game of the Year. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, and it's number two for me. But my history with Halo is launch day of the original Xbox. And from then, wow, it's been old. a absolute yes yes indeed uh, a love affair with halo multiplayer starting with halo 1 split screen and at land parties with friends to halo 2 and the introduction of xbox live into that ecosystem halo 3 is maybe my most i would say it's probably right behind final fantasy 14 the game that i put the most hours to in this world um halo 4 and 5 i have less than 15 hours on each of them i want to say like my playtime is like 12 hours for halo 4 including multiplayer and less than 10 for halo 5 so i was really not into it i played some reach i played some odst um big into the halo series but tough to not call the last decade since 343 took over a bit of a fall from grace and let me tell you yeah what a return to form they finally got it right after taking their time with this one and delaying it a full year and still Honestly, all things considered, number two game of the year is still a bit of an unfinished video game. Um, the parts that we got do show very healthy signs of life, I'll tell you that much. Uh, the multiplayer is incredible. The campaign is the most I've ever cared about a Halo campaign, not story-wise, but just gameplay-wise. The grappling hook, goes without saying, is just absolutely great. fantastic grappling introduction great. into the Halo universe. I feel like I wouldn't be able to play the old Halo campaigns anymore without thinking about how much I <laughs> missed my grappling hook. Um, yeah. But even the, the multiplayer itself, which I, I get all the hubbub, there's a lot of issues with it so far. I actually maxed the battle pass recently in the last month or so. Yeah. Game's only been out for a couple months, and it's the first time I've maxed any type of, like, battle pass since, like, seasons, like, one or two of Apex Legends uh, a few years ago. So it, it really did grab me. Um, I'm not a very skilled gamer. Anybody that watches my streams or knows me outside of this uh, little show that we're doing here will tell you that very, very quickly. But nonetheless, it was nice to dig into a game that had some 
nice fluid gameplay to get accustomed to and really learn and put my time into them. Again, I'm probably mentioning this for the third or fourth time on this show in particular, but it's tough to grab me. It's tough to really have me sink my teeth into a game. It's kind of, it's a real min-max situation. No, minimum <laughs> or maximum. Yeah, I guess that plays. I'll either check out a game for an hour or sink hundreds of hours into it. And this is yeah. already a 100-plus hour game for me, which is more than I can say for the last few Halos. So it's just really nice to have Halo back in my life. The multiplayer is sound. The campaign was fun. I'm excited to see what comes next because right now it's in a pretty stagnant state. You can tell that they got as much of the game out as they could at the time frame that they had promised after delaying and delaying uh. and having issues and cutting content. And even then it came into some kind of more questionable reviews and uh, some gripes with the systems and the way that you unlock things and the battle pass issues. And they seem to have rectified that by kind of pushing everything that they had set up for the first six months of this game to the front. So now it feels like we're getting everything that they have and it's a little bit stagnant right now. Um, I think everyone's kind of waiting to see what's next. I'm hoping that they have a real knockdown drag out showing for season two and the launch of online co-op and all that. So I'm excited to see what 2022 has in store for Halo Infinite. But if I'm judging this game on the bones of what they've created and as something that's supposed to exist for potentially a decade of gameplay and expansions and online multiplayer. I think we're in a, I think we're in pretty good shape. Yeah. Well, yeah, I agree with what you said. Um, my main attraction to this game, since I'm not a huge multiplayer guy is the story. Mm -hmm. Um, and personally, I really liked where they were going with the story in four and five. I think five cut short too early. I think they should have extended that a little bit more to, uh, I don't know, evolve what they were working on. Um, Okay. I feel like they I feel like they took the easy way out and was like like a dog with its running away with its tail tucked between its legs um with the way they handled the story in this game. Uh hmm. I liked the weapon. Uh I liked Master Chief. He felt human. Uh he felt great. It was great. Um but I don't like the way they handled Cortana. I don't want to get into spoilers with it, but they handled Cortana off screen and we got to see the aftermath. Yeah, and I didn't like that at all. Um, they just said, you know what, Cortana, she'll be in a graphic novel in a you know a year from now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah, fall of reach. Yeah, and it's like I, for five games, Cortana has been one of the two main characters, right? It's it's been Chief and Cortana since the start, mm -hmm. and they just solved that off screen. I don't know. I wasn't a fan of it, but Sideline I love the bit, gameplay. Yeah. Yeah, I love the gameplay. I love the story leading up to the resolution of Cortana. Um, mm -hmm. The weapon was cool. Uh, she pretty much is Cortana. Um, yeah. And uh, the banished were they were all right. I I personally I kind of liked the guardians and stuff. The yeah, I've found the banished to be indistinguishable from one another. I, I didn't yeah. know who was Tremonius and who was. Balthazar yeah, or, whatever Shurum or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I um, couldn't. I, I think, and that's like the big. It's cool that this game fell on our lists in different spots, but made both top 10 lists for such drastically different reasons. Because, yeah, in the nicest way possible, because I know a ton of other people share your opinions and they like the story elements of that. That is like all of the I don't care stuff of Halo yeah. to me. Um, but the fact that it was passable for you and is actually, you know, halfway decent means that at least in some ways it's uh it's hitting it on all fronts. So Yeah. Halo Infinite. Very yeah, solid. Master Chief Master Chief, whenever he gets in his feels, is the best. It's, it's pretty great. Yeah. Nah, Master Chief when he's four shot and fools with the BR and sticking <laughs> people in the face. That's when Master Chief is the best. And grappling around an open world. All right. God, that grapple is so good. It's time to get to one of my big misses of the year. I feel even more guilty about this one than I do Deathloop. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I know. I know what you're saying, but Jake, another Skyrim mod. No, <laughs> okay. no, no, God, no, that no, is. I, I, okay, so I have my, I have my, uh, my notes for this that I kind of pulled up. I actually haven't been using them, but the first sentence for the notes for this game is. Skyrim mod is such an insult to this game, period. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this game, uh, I actually City. checked out. 
yeah, Forgotten City. I actually checked out the Skyrim mod recently, uh, and it's a very different game. Um, it holds the same DNA, but it's a very different game. Uh, it doesn't have the ancient Rome aesthetic type thing to it. Mm -hmm. um, man, this game, I, 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 I need to stop saying explain, I hate puzzle explain games. Explain for, I feel like perhaps something that we'll be better at in the future is assuming people know nothing about these yeah. games. What the fuck is it? So the Forgotten City is a game that at one point started off as a Skyrim mod. Uh, it was like the highest rated, highest downloaded mod ever or something like that. I, I Don't quote me on that. I could be very wrong. But it was a very popular mod, like millions and millions of downloads. Um, but pretty much what it is, the, the main theme is you go to a city and it's, it's I, I'm now explaining the actual game Forgotten. and not the mod. Um, yeah, so you go to a Forgotten City, uh, great title, um, and uh, there are people there, I think there's like 20 people there-ish, uh, and they all live by one rule, uh, if, if one sin, uh, uh, the many are punished for the sins of the one, or something along those lines, so pretty much if one, there's a person that's gonna sin, they know someone's gonna sin soon, and your job is to find out who is going to sin, because when someone sins they all get turned to gold. They get like these gold warriors come out and shoot them and turn them to gold. Mm -hmm. um, so they, uh, you're trying to figure out from the start who is going to sin. So you have to use like social deduction and the time loop mechanic to figure out who's going to sin. So whenever you sin or someone else sins, you get sent back to the beginning. You have to kind of like run to a portal to get sent back to the beginning of the day. Uh, and the pro progress that you made, a choice that they that was really good, was uh, the very first person that you talked to out of the portal, if you made progress in the previous day, you can just tell him and he'll automatically make that progress for you. So oh, you don't have to do the same That's thing. That's a cool way to handle it. Every time, yeah, you can do that and continue to investigate other areas. Um, hmm. It's it's a very very good like uh, five hour experience. It's not very long. Um, truthfully, it doesn't have much replay value. But there are like four different endings. I also have the platinum on this, by the way. Uh, there are like four different <laughs> endings. Um, yeah, each from different sources. Um, it it's a puzzle game, and I and I keep saying I hate puzzle games, but uh, you know, Squanky's right. I think as long as the puzzle game is a time loop, I think I like it. Um, yeah. But it's it's also a game that's hard to talk about without giving away spoilers for stuff. So sure. I don't want to give any uh, exact examples of gameplay uh, stuff, I guess. Um, but it's really good. It's 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 a phenomenal game. Yep. I love it. I bought it for like 20 bucks and here it is at the top of my game that your list and it's worth every penny I spent on it and more. I'd pay 60 bucks for it. That's awesome. I, I really think it seems like something that I'd be into and length, not so bad, right? Isn't that the case? No. Yeah, the length is, you know, like four to five hours. If I like, I think I did it in eight completionist with all the trophies and stuff. So yeah, come on. I can, I can sacrifice a day. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll get Forgotten City done. Awesome. You should. All right. It's also on Game Pass, I think. I could be wrong. It is on Game Pass. I have, Yeah. Forgive me, City, for I have sinned. <laughs> turn turn me to gold. I haven't even played gold. the free game. Classic. Classic <clears throat> game list comedy coming at you. Yep. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we're at we're at that point where we have reached our games of the year. 2021 2021 game of the year by this time if you're a astute listener you already know what mine is because i said it was coming up on my list and it hasn't appeared yet but collins you don't know so let's get to it ratchet and clank rift apart for old jt and returnal for colin i'm gonna returnal. let you take it away on returnal man um number one yeah, absolutely. Without a doubt. Uh, first party PlayStation roguelike? Yeah. Yeah, it's insane because this is the first ever roguelike that I've ever played and ever completed. Um oh, shit. it it the world is so <laughs> my dog is eating a tissue in the side right now. <laughs> um Classic. 
<laughs> the world the world is so uh like ah, grungy it's just if you watch alien that that's mm -hmm. just the feeling that the world gives you it, it, it almost feels like a metroid world um i i've seen a lot of people compare it to this is what a modern metroid game should be and i i completely agree um the environments are beautiful but haunting um they're very alien <laughs> get it alien on a different yeah, planet yeah. you know so uh, but this yeah but the story is actually super interesting so it, it's it's funny because the top three games of mine are time loops um yeah. big loop guy yeah yeah, big loop guy, big loop guy. Uh, so Celine crash lands on a planet when she finds a white signal or like a a white fog signal. I don't remember exactly what it was called. Hmm. But uh, you work your way through three biomes to try to get to that signal. Um, and you know, I, I'm going to spoil it. So spoiler <laughs> warnings. You know, I don't think no, no, no. You can get around. Returnal has enough going on in the story. Is oh, uh, bro. But the no, best part. I think you've done a great job of no spoilers. Yeah, you know, you you raise a fair point. But let's just say, halfway through the game, you think you've beat the game. Um, but then you realize you didn't beat the game, and there's still the other half of the game, <laughs> right? Interesting. God, it's so hard to skate around this, but. Um, it, it tells a story and you, you expect a resolution, but when you get that resolution, you realize like, that's not the way out. Like, that's not the way to break the loop. You, you, you're fighting for it for hours to break this loop, to escape this planet. Um, but you realize what you're doing is not the way out. So I'm blown away. Sorry to interrupt. Mm. That we're talking so much about story with Returnal as your game of the year because I thought this would be mm. almost exclusively gameplay. And the story's that good? Yeah, absolutely. The story wow. is like, like, and every time you die, you get flashes of more story. Um, mm. So death, death helps you in in the story and also in progressing in the roguelike, you know, way. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, God, from my ears itching. Um, there is story. There's a great story. Uh, and the ending, the ending is kind of up in the air. It's kind of a thing that nobody really knows how to interpret it, which I really like uh, sometimes. I really like Returnal it whenever it's up to interpretation. Two? Question mark? That's what I'm hoping for. That's what I'm begging for. Um, Interesting. Also, this game does a great job of, like, representation. I feel like, you know, the main cat, the main player is, a, like, a middle-aged woman. Um mm -hmm. But you don't really see much in games, and I I really appreciate that because it, it's funny. Anytime I can play a game where I get to choose my gender, I always choose a dude or a, a girl because like I feel like I play as like dudes with like beards and you know yeah. ponytails in every game. Um, but I really like how the they stars of most video games. Yeah, they change that. Yeah, up for sure. Move. Yeah, and and the uh, there's a little like horror uh, side to this game. Kind of in the environments, but also there are some first-person uh, parts of this game. Six, specifically, I think. I think there's a limit of six uh, yeah. first-person areas. And they're kind of scary. They're kind of creepy. Yeah. Um, but it all plays into the story and what's going on in Celine's mind and where Celine's at. You get to figure out about the alien civilization on the planet that you're at, which I adore. Man, it is... It's it's ten out of ten. I I adore this game, and I can't wait for a possible sequel or an expansion or literally anything more. Because yet so, again, I have the platinum on it. The scary parts of the game are what turns me off to it, as already noted. I don't love a scary oh. game. Yeah, but it, when I look at the gameplay, it looks silky fucking smooth. Oh, that it's so smooth. The case, absolutely. It's. It's so smooth. You you run so fast, and there are these doors that open right before you get to them, and it's just so mm. pleasing to like thread the needle. It feels like you're threading the needle of a door, but it just opens at a perfect time. <laughs> um, it is so good. It's so good, and and the scary parts don't let them turn you off because they're like three minutes long each time. It's Got it's it. not that much of the story. It's not that much of the gameplay time in total. It's yeah. just little story bits. Wild. And it comes from Housemark Entertainment, who is known from like only doing bullet hell like indie games, and then this is their yeah. big, big budget release, and it 
is an absolute slapper, apparently. And, and it's it's a it's a third person bullet hell roguelike. Like they have the bullet hell DNA in there, and it's so pleasing to perfectly dodge like all sorts of little blue and red and orange balls yeah. coming at you. Third person bullet hell horror roguelike. It's like they're roguelike. trying to make the game sci-fi that I would horror be least rogue. interested in yet for some Dude, reason it's so good. i'm still interested in playing it and i think i honestly do think that i will get around to that one as well um what do you think about let me just let me just throw that out there you said these things third person roguelike from a company that historically puts out indie cheap games this is a 70 dollar playstation 5 game i think the thing that's holding me back the most Review copy not provided by PlayStation. <laughs> um, what what uh, what do you have to say about that? It warrants a seventy dollar purchase. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, which featured. you know, I, without a doubt, um, there were some things at launch that they had to leave out because there were some technical issues with it. But they're back in now. I actually beat the game before those ever got put back in, um, mm -hmm. and I still think it was worth it then. Uh, you can also get it for cheaper than seventy dollars now, but. It's only going down. I've only seen it down to like the fifty dollar price point, which I think you know is is just a telltale sign that it's worth more. And you know, it's it's worth the amount of money that it is. It's it's going to be one that we look back in a couple of years as a cult classic, like without a doubt. Love yeah. it. Solid pick. Solid pick. Now we breezed by it. It came in at number eight for you. For me, number one game of the year. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Now, mm. I feel like I should say I'm a gigantic Ratchet and Clank fan. Ratchet to me is probably not quite what Sly is to you, but when we're talking about those Sony platformers from the PS2 era, Jack and Daxter, Sly Cooper, and Ratchet and Clank, it's Ratchet for me, baby. And yeah. this game is I, I went back and I streamed it in very, very late 2021. I streamed it in yeah. December of 2021 after it became the only video game that I've ever 100% completed and platinumed. Uh, it's a game that I played through start to finish, liked it so much that I didn't want it to end and tried to suck every little bit of life that it had in it out so that I could enjoy every moment that I had with this fucking video game. It doesn't reinvent the wheel. There are games on this list before your eyes comes to mind, unpacking comes to mind, that do inventive things with video games and maybe arguably pushes the genre forward. But this is just video game soul food to me. It is just doing everything that Ratchet and Clank has always done to the fucking max, turned up to 11. It is perfect video gaming. I truly feel as if it's a perfect video game. When I rack my brain about what could be different about it, what could they give me to improve it? The only thing that I want is more is a sequel. And I have searched far and wide for a game that scratches the itch of these old 3d platformers to, you know, make that big step into the future. And this is absolutely it. I mean, gameplay is tight. It's smooth running absolutely incredibly on PlayStation 5, and it just blows my mind every time I hop back into it. And when I did hop in and restream it to... Essentially, the title of that stream was ironing out my goatee list. I wanted to make sure that this was the number one game for me, and without a shadow of a doubt, number one. Number one by a long shot. What did you think? Oh, dude, I loved the game. Um, I finished it in a day, uh, like a day's time um legend definitely absolute yeah, I, you know i guess what i got the platinum on this one too uh, yeah who would have thought wow imagine that um but no i Who'd i love this game one i'm sorry <laughs> you know maybe next time maybe next year um but i i love this game platformers are great the combat was great can i just say the topiary sprinkler was phenomenal i don't know mm, why i loved I it love so much little weird aoe untraditional weapons in this yeah just super weird things um yeah. but uh it you know this game gives me hope that one day i will get another sly cooper because it, it shows that there's an audience for these like cartoony yeah. platformers um oh without like they're the mascot platformers there's there's an audience for them and and this game shows that they can still be good in the 20 
uh, I was going to say 21st century, but I guess in 2022, they can still be good games like in and yes. appeal to the masses. Um, they're sure. not something that we left behind in the PS2 era. Yeah, um, and I feel like perhaps we've done it a little bit of a disservice talking about how it's just like a gamer ass game that doesn't reinvent the wheel, but there are subtle things that they've added to the game to make it, uh, you know, kind of stand up to the times. I think that the addition mm -hmm. of the dash is fucking mm -hmm. huge. It feels like it was always there in the same way that I talked about Psychonauts one kind of looks the way that I picture Psychonauts two or I'm sorry, yeah. Psychonauts two looks the way that I picture Psychonauts one in my head. It feels like I've always had that dash in the Ratchet and Clank games, but going back yeah. now to the older ones and not having it, oh, it feels so slow. Uh, it yeah. really has, I don't want to say it's ruined the old Ratchet and Clanks for me, but it is the new standard of Ratchet mm -hmm. and Clank. Uh, we touched briefly on that the topiary sprinkler that you were talking about. The weapons in this game, more so than the other Ratchet and Clank games, are fucking fantastic. The... Mm -hmm. Variety of weapons has always been there for Ratchet and Clank, but what I found in those old games was that I'd gravitate towards a handful of weapon. My wheel would kind of just max out, and I'd say, okay, this is what I use. I'd maybe get one and cycle it in for something that I had at the beginning of the game. But I think that I used every single weapon in this game. Maybe there were a couple that I didn't use all that much, but goddamn, yeah. every single thing just clicked. It was absolutely perfect start to finish. It just... It it's gaming bliss. And, and you know, they, they did a good job of putting the uh, ammo capacity for certain weapons low enough to where you have yeah. to change and you have yep. to experiment. Um, and, and it was just, it wasn't so much that it felt like I was running out of ammo every other second, but it was enough to make me want to experiment with other, other weapons and just for see, sure. what, see what it can do. Yeah, and, I found myself in those situations where... I would be in like a lengthy fight or some sort of arena or something like that. And I'd be down to two or three weapons with everything else exhausted of ammo. So it's just, I think speaks to the balancing of the game really yeah. first and foremost is that it just, it feels like such a tight package. Uh, the progression mm -hmm. is right where it needs to be. The levels are varied. Um, we haven't even talked about the story, which I think is, Honestly, as, as good as Ratchet and Clank has ever been, the characters are written well. They introduced two brand new characters. One of them is honestly a spoiler in itself. The fact that they kept yep. it under wraps, didn't put it in the marketing at all, and they still really haven't talked about it. You're able to hop into this game if you haven't played it and be introduced to something that will probably end up being a cornerstone of the Ratchet and Clank franchise going forward, and it's yep. barely touched upon. Um, and. And they did a really good job in introducing those new characters. Lots of times yeah. you don't like new characters, but those were both two really likable yeah. characters. One, one more so than the other, but yeah, 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 for sure. But I think the, um, I think for for a very long time since Toy Story came out in 1996, um, it's always just been this drive to. Uh, Every every year a new game comes out, you're like, oh, it feels like you're playing a Pixar movie. How many times have you heard that? Dude, um, I was this, just thinking that this feel they did it. They they, yeah. they did it. You're looking at gameplay right now. This game is like playing a Pixar movie. It really it is. looks as good in its cutscenes as it does in its gameplay, and it is a, a visual feast. Not to mention how fun it is to control the fact that you yep. have the ability to make things happen in this world that looks as good as it does. Yep. For sure, without a doubt. I, I was literally just sitting here thinking, I'm, 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 I'm watching the gameplay right now, and I'm just like, wow, I forgot how beautiful this game is. Yeah. It looks like an animated movie. It's just perfect. It's fucking mind blowing. Mind blowing. Yeah. Chat, listeners, viewers, that's the list. But the fun doesn't end here. I got more slides of shit that we missed, so we'll just run through a couple things. Um that we kind of have as uh, not quite superlatives. They're just additions. The thing that I think that we, we must touch on is our honorable mentions. So let's just run mm -hmm. through these. Let's not give any of them the amount of time that we gave to our actual top 10 list. Let's just run through some of the things that didn't quite make the list. And there's some overlap here that I had on my list that's on Colin's list here. And I don't think there's any overlap the other way. And I'm going to call this half the the stuff that you see under me for my honorable mentions if you're 
listening to this, I'll, I'll rattle these off. My honorable mentions are what I'm going to coin the Nintendo wall of shame. I am a gigantic first party <laughs> Nintendo fan. If you're listening and you can't see this behind me are Mario posters for 64 galaxy and sunshine uh, up in the corner. I've got all sorts of Pokemon and Zelda stuff yet. Not a single one cracked my top 10 this year because honestly, Nintendo didn't, impress me this year which it pains me to say and all of the games on this list are either remakes or rehashes or reinventions of existing series that just came up short and we'll get to our stinker shortly <laughs> which you'll see uh unfortunately for me is also a nintendo game but my list is new pokemon snap pokemon brilliant diamond and shining pearl mario party superstars mario 3d world and bowser's fury and Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD. Colin, talk to me a little about yours and rattle off your five. Uh, so I got a short hike, um, which, you know, I we'll talk about it more in depth in a minute, I, maybe. Uh, Back for Blood, which, well, you know, was good, but I didn't touch sure. it after I finished the campaign. Uh, Scarlet Nexus, which was on my top ten originally, but got pushed down after I played more games. Great game. Mm -hmm. Play it. Uh, Forza Horizon 5, adore that game, but I need to play more of it. I haven't finished it yet. Yeah. And then uh, Metroid Dread, same thing. Just haven't finished it yet. I, I'm enjoying it, loving it, love the the environment, very similar to Returnal. Just haven't yep. finished it yet. Metroid is on my honorable mentions as well, as is Forza Horizon 5. Uh, Back for Blood is on my nothing list, despite having actually given it a fair shake. I, the game didn't do it for me. Um, talk to me about it, Scarlet Nexus. Uh, so Scarlet Nexus is, I, I would consider it a stylish action RPG, um, kind of, kind of in the lines or in the veins of like, uh, Astral Chain, maybe even Bayonetta. I, I don't know. It's not made by Platinum. Uh, it's a Bandai Namco studio. I don't know exactly yeah. which studio. Um, but it, it's following these two teenagers. Uh, it's a very anime game, by the way. So if you're not an anime oh, person, you actually. won't like it. Yeah. Very anime. <laughs> Um, you follow these two teenagers through some weird thing where you're fighting weird monsters and there's like time travel and loops and <laughs> it's just all sorts of weird, but it's, it's a really fun game. Uh, Interesting. yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll back and forth a little bit. I'll talk about, um, yeah. a couple of mine where I feel like I don't need to really talk that much about brilliant diamond shining pearl. It's a rehash remake, pretty faithful to the originals. Glad to have them not doing anything that special for me. Um, maybe one of the bigger disappointments on this list for me is Skyward Sword HD, which is now the best way to play Skyward Sword. But as I progressed through uh, that game, I could not stop thinking throughout all of the gameplay mechanics. There's this mental barrier I have of like motion controls. And I get it. They took the motion controls out, but everything just feels like a sidestep around. It's like, okay, we put ourselves into this motion control corner and now we want to bring this game to people that aren't going to use motion controls. How are we going to do it? And it just can't get it out of my mind. It doesn't feel fluid. It feels like I am adapting to control a game the way that it wasn't meant to be played and the way that it was meant to be played does not appeal to me. Um, Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury is a fantastic video game, a fantastic package. Out of my five, it's the one that was actually on my list that got bumped out as something else got added, I think Psychonauts, um, because the mm. Bowser's Fury standalone, which is arguably like a DLC type of package, is a really fun 3D Mario adventure, and the original Mario 3D world is very, very good. Um, what about a short hike? I don't know much about that. Isometric view, Breath of the Wild inspired? Yeah, that? kind of. It, it has the there? climbing mechanics of uh, <laughs> Breath of the Wild. Um, so I guess anything with those climbing mechanics or Breath of the hmm. Wild inspired. Um, but it, it's 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 exactly what the name says. It's a short hike up a mountain to get cell service. Um, it's super cute. Has oh, great music. Um, I also got to platinum on it. <laughs> um, and you you play as a little bird that you can fly around. You can just glide down the mountain. Um, and you can also turn like your pixelated slider up and down. So you can have like a super pixelated look or you oh, can yeah. have like the smooth, like, um, wind waker type look to it. Um, but it, it's, it's a really, really fun game. Um, cute game, just a nice, relaxing, simple, um, cute game. Love it. 
looks really yeah. cool looks looks pleasant in its uh length you said short oh yeah very short like uh to beat name. it maybe three hours nice that's a that's an easy afternoon knockout for me yeah. um Mario Party Superstars is the game that I've played probably the most on my list of honorable mentions. It is the best Mario Party ever created, but still uh, has built its empire on the bones of something that's about 20 years old. Uh, fantastic online multiplayer as far as the Switch standard goes. And then New Pokemon Snap is a game I wanted so dearly, and I do love and enjoy but very rarely do I clamor for a remake or a sequel as much as I did for Pokemon Snap and then for it to come out and <laughs> just kind of be lukewarm on it is a little depressing. And I don't know what they could have done yeah, better. I think that maybe that mm, it pains me to fucking say out loud that maybe Pokemon Snap was better left in the past. Oh, mm. Don't tune out. This is the first episode. Please stay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Metroid Dread, I only played the demo of and then i watched a lot of gameplay online um and it seems right up my alley it's getting an honorable mention for me because i need some actual uh time with that game but i think it's probably something that i'll be very very keen on completing once i get there uh what yeah. did you brush over on your list was forza horizon 5 which i also have a decent amount of time what did you think overall Oh, I, I loved it. Um, I love the one night that we all spent playing together. That was probably the highlight of that game for me. Um, mm -hmm. it, it was really fun. I, I, I really enjoyed it. And, I mean, it's it's a racing game. It's the best racing game there is right now. So, Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. I couldn't have it on the list when Cruise and Blast is so high up on my list. <laughs> which is so, it's such sacrilege to say, like, arguably the best-reviewed game of the year, Forza mm -hmm. Horizon 5, to me, is just not as fun as I have playing Cruise and Blast. <laughs> you, Fuck it. We'll we just continue. have to pretend that Forza doesn't exist for you, so that way you don't feel ashamed yeah, for putting Cruise yeah. in Nothing can above that. stop my shame. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get to our uh, stinkers of the year. Oh. Stinker! Pain is me. Pain is me. So Stinker of the Year is the game that I wanted the most to like and just didn't. It came up short. I had high, high hopes for Mario Golf Super Rush. Um, Colin's pick is Far Cry 6. Maybe you're in the same boat as me. Uh, I had played all the Mario Golfs. I was so excited that we're finally getting a Mario Golf. The fact that Mario Golf was as successful as it was and Nintendo invented a system that had a controller that was motion based and looked like the fucking handle of a golf club and didn't put Mario golf on it is still a fucking mind blower to me. And they put out Mario golf super rush, which is, I think the best way I could describe it is like a neutered version of super Mario golf. It fucking takes away the swing mechanic that we had come to expect from the Mario golf series. Uh, it added a huge component of the game being this kind of real-time golf where you controlled your character to get to your ball. And I just didn't need any of this shit. I just wanted to hit the A button three times to swing the selected club to get the ball closer to the hole and then do it again 17 more times. Yeah. And it tried to do too much and didn't do enough. Really, really hurt. Where did Far Cry 6 come up short for you? Um, you know, I think your last sentence of it tried to do too much and didn't do enough explains Far Cry 6 almost perfectly. Um, mm -hmm. I, I I just got lost in that game, man. It, it's so, it feels so cluttered with all the stuff that you're overwhelmed with. Um, naturally, it's a Ubisoft game, so you're, you're absolutely just bombarded with things to do. Uh, settlements to clear out, towers to climb, and all this stuff to check off a checklist, which I normally really yeah. like. I, I like checking stuff off a checklist. Um, Traditional Ubisoft uh, open world. Yeah, yeah. But something about this game just felt, like, tight. I don't know if it was, like, the FOV that was tighter than normal or something, but it honestly made me feel, like, claustrophobic when I was playing it. Um, so I haven't gone back to finish it. I will at some point. Yeah. Um, but this was the game that I expected to load up and be sucked into for a couple days. But I ended up loading it up and not playing it for a couple weeks and then loading it up again and then haven't touched it since. I know what you're saying about that. 
like intent to go back to on those Ubisoft games because you really do have to be in the mood. It happened to me last year with Valhalla or two years ago, last mm. holiday season, um, where I was excited. I played Odyssey, I played Origins, and I got into Valhalla. And I was like, yeah, just not really in the mood for it right now. I'm not opposed yeah. to the game, didn't hate it or anything like that, but uh, goddamn. I just need to be in the right mood to have that many things to check off of a fucking list. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I spent like 130 hours in Valhalla, so Jesus Christ. Just checking off to get the platinum. None yeah. of I've done none of the the DLC surprisingly enough. Yep. But a classic. Yeah. The last thing that we have to cover is our misses. We're not saying that these are bad games, we're not saying that they're good games, we're saying that uh in comparison to most goaty conversations we don't really have an opinion on them. And there are some games on here that I certainly want to check out and they could change in time. Believe me, if we end up getting to them, you'll hear about them on future episodes. This is, of course, episode zero. Um, yep. There's one on here that I think you've played a little bit of. And other than that, I think we're pretty much riding blind. All right. So yeah. the one that you've actually touched is Kenna Bridge of Spirits. Mm -hmm. Into it or... Um, I actually love it uh, until I get to puzzles and then I get frustrated and then I turn it off and I don't touch it for a couple weeks. Then I go back, figure out the puzzle and repeat. Uh, I yeah. love the game. I hate the puzzles. It's just something about those puzzles, man. Kenna feels like a PS2 game made for modern consoles and I can't believe I didn't yeah. get to it this year. I think in the same way that like I was kind of like all right, Returnal 70 bucks, I felt a little bit like all right, Kenna 40 bucks, you feel like a game that I would pick up on sale for $4. Like Sphinx mm. and the Cursed Mummy. Uh I don't know, man. It it's and worth more than $4. I know, I know, I know. Um and it's certainly something that I'm going to play and probably love. Um Chicory, yeah. any experience? None, none at all. To have Same it. top down Probably Zelda never will. like game, um, right up my alley. I actually bought it with intent to play, and it sits upon my Switch untouched. Um, inscription, card based battler, deck spooky builder, vibes. not my thing. Kind of my thing. Spooky vibes, not really my thing. I've seen a decent amount of it played. Seems very cool. Probably would get a nod if I had spent the time on it, or if perhaps it was uh, themed differently. Yeah. Um, I like the monster... spooky vibe. It's just not the deck. Yeah, aspect. it's interesting. The spooky stuff that they're doing is kind of the coolest thing about it. Um, monster Hunter Rise, just not into the series. I understand that it's probably the best version of Monster Hunter out there. Recently got ported to PC as well, and people are loving that, but just not something I've uh, explored myself. Outer Wilds. <sighs> we'll get to it. I think at this yeah. point, next week, we'll be talking about Outer Wilds in depth and... Uh, the merits of the first part of that game. And then from what I understand, Echoes of the Eye, unfortunately a bit horror themed comparatively to Here's the a initial question. game. Mm -hmm. Sh should we both agree to have played Echoes of the Eye by ne this time next week? Is that, I need is that more time. You want to I, here's my thing about Outer Wilds right now as it sits. Is it such a complete, fantastic package that sits in my mind? The only thing that I can think of is how I wish I could play Outer Wilds again for the first time again. at some point in my life. Yeah, so I think gotcha. I want to let it simmer. And then play I'm kinda like, later. I I've got this yeah, lying in wait. I have this thing that I just know I'm going to adore um, <laughs> to explore another time. But believe me, we will. And probably within the next 365. Uh, last one's Call of Duty Vanguard, the first Call of Duty that I haven't touched since Same. ever. Since yeah. ever. I played all of the other ones. It's the only one it's I haven't played. Sign of the Times, man. <laughs> sign of hey, the man. Times. Microsoft property. Just wait till they revive it yeah, and figure right. it all out. When it hits Game Pass, I'll give it give it the old fair. It's gonna shake. be it's gonna be Call of Duty Micro uh, I don't know. I was gonna make a micro hard joke or something. Don't I got nothing. It. Just sign me off. Don't, don't just, just give, this. I give up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a show. That's a podcast. This was super <laughs> fun. Uh, Colin, yeah. obviously, I think we... Uh, I Personally, this has exceeded my expectations on how smooth it went. I hope for anybody that's yeah. watching the video version or caught this live, special shout out to you, the people that are sitting here ever so quiet in chat, being slightly ignored, but ever so loud. <laughs> um, thank you to anybody that listens to this that watches this my hope is that nobody watches this for like a month or two and we work the kinks out and then 
you're watching this like five years in the future and you're like let me watch the first thing that they ever did together wow this is this bad now and you're like all right well they came a long way <laughs> that's my hope mm-hmm. for the future uh, but in that five year on future i hope we are knocking it out of the park still really really yeah. fun any closing thoughts anything that we missed anything that we have to say i guess oh I man where i think i've said yeah um oh god i should have prepared do, my my handles do your plugs. man do your plugs um you got them you got them just rattle oh, them off i, I gotta right. i gotta I shout got out my mine. twitter i never shout i'm out my jake twitter. twitching on fucking everything i locked that shit down it's jake twitching like twitching but without a g jake twitching uh i stream on twitch a lot of nights a week um on twitter i'm on instagram um you know a little bit everywhere the cat in the background is richard the dog in his background is corvo yeah corvo. Hit me with those socials all right so twitch obviously find me at call at calling colleen k-a-u-l-i-n-e underscore somebody stole colleen without the underscore so I'm, I'm really pissed about that yeah okay D- twitter is colin k-a-u-l-i-n d capital d Ooh. you'll Ooh. see a picture of me at the game awards we can talk about oh. that in the future yeah yeah uh and then youtube is just colleen k-a-u-l-i-n-e uh no underscore nothing you know i i've got i've really got to consolidate my stuff but it's really difficult because funnily enough there's colleen is like taken and i don't know all the jakes were taken too so if it's any consolation i had to come up with something (laughs) new classic Uh, this was really fun thank you guys all for being here that is our show we'll be back next week with our actual episode one talking about all the big news from january 2022 and what we've been playing see you soon bye